Hey everybody, welcome to my piece on the lower end of the Lone Pine Branch. Uh, the Lone Pine Branch was originally called the Oeno Branch. It uh, went from Mojave, retired into the main line for the Southern Pacific, to a place called Oeno up the northern end of the Owens Valley and connected there with the Carson and Colorado narrow gauge. That railroad had been in place since 1883. The uh, Oeno Branch was built between 1908 and 1910, and it was built to facilitate the construction of the Los Angeles Aqueduct. Uh, once the aqueduct was complete, uh, the railroad remained in place and served the mining interests in the areas above Bishop and Laws on the Carson and Colorado and in the Cerro Gordo area uh, below on this line. And uh, in 1914, the Trona Railroad was constructed and it tied in to the Oeno Branch at Cyril Station. And I will be doing a piece on the Trona Railroad itself in the near future. And that branch line was built to serve the uh, huge plant that was uh, constructed out on the edge of Cyril's Lake to uh, mine the chemicals off that lake and they make a lot of products. It's still a very busy railroad, still a very, a very busy plant. I did a uh, piece on uh, Trona. It was one of the first videos I posted on here and uh, I'll link that in the description below. But anyway, uh, there are a lot of interesting places along the line historically, geographically, geologically. Uh, some of those I'll hit, some I'll do standalone pieces on, like Cyril's. Uh, I did a standalone piece on Cantill. I did a standalone piece on Saltdale, and I'll link all of those in the description below. But uh, I won't be hitting all the stations. Many of the stations that were here originally uh, had sidings and such, but they were only here for the construction of the aqueduct, and once that was finished, they uh, were rarely ever used. Uh, some of the sidings remained in place and became what were called Class G freight stations. They didn't uh, have regular stops there. Uh, interesting note before I let you go, this was also nicknamed the Jawbone and one of the pieces of source material I have uh, on this is a book by an author named Phil Serpico and the book is called The Jawbone. A very interesting book, very cool book. If you uh, don't own it, you should uh, seek it out. It's really cool. I think you'll enjoy it. If you uh, do have it, well, that's a good thing. Anyway, here we go on the Lone Pine. Okay, this is where the Oeno branch leaves the main line of the Union Pacific, originally the Southern Pacific, and heads out to uh, the end of the track currently at Cyril's. Um, this is the north end of the Mojave Yard. There is the yard back there that train that they're making up right there is the is the uh, train that goes out to Cyril's and uh, anyway that's where it peels off and that crossing up there <laughs> most of it's behind that billboard that is where the tracks cross Sierra Highway I was a gang foreman when we installed that crossing in its current form with the cantilevers and all that. And we did that in 1992 or 94. I can't even remember now. It's been a long time ago. And it was me and Phil Silva, John Drake, James Brock, and Jim Chambers. And uh, so anyway, that is where it heads out of Mojave towards Chaffee, which we'll go to next. All right, this is the first siding or the first station that was built out of Mojave. This was one of the original uh, sidings and stations. There was actually a yard here. This is Chaffee, I'm sorry, C-H-A-F-F-E-E. -E. And uh, I said there was actually a yard here back in the days and it was all spread out over there where all that clear spots are. There were a few tracks over there. I'm not sure how many. This spur track right here still serves the Mojave Airport, which is over there behind all that stuff. These are all 
pieces to wind turbines. Those right there that look like houses, those are actually the generator housings. Uh, pretty good sized wind turbines. Those are pieces of the tower. And then over there where that big crane is, those are the uh, nose pieces that the blades hook up to. And uh, over there are those cranes are the actual blades. But uh, stays pretty busy. Uh, mostly with the wind turbine stuff. I'm really not sure what may or may not go into the uh, airport anymore. There's still a lot of businesses over there. General Electric, Scaled Composites, Virgin Galactic. There's a lot of stuff over there. But uh, looking out this way, that is looking out towards uh, Cyril's, the end of this track. And uh, we'll head on out that way. All right, uh, I had to scrounge around a while to find this, but uh, apparently it looks like nothing, but I am actually standing in the roadbed of the former connector line that connected the Oenio branch at Chaffee to the main line at a station they called Sage. This... Uh, Line was graded, but it was never ballasted. Pretty much the same thing that uh, they did up at Cantill, which we'll get to later. <clears throat> but they knew this wasn't going to be permanent. It was going to be a very temporary line, and the reason it was built was to uh, keep the Mojave Yard, which is about a mile or so that way, from becoming cluttered with the uh, material, machinery, and everything else that was going to be used to build both the uh, Oenio branch and the uh, material for the aqueduct. So they built this connector line, and uh, the main line is about a mile that way. You see that truck going up it, the further traffic at the base of the uh, wind parks. Anyway, as soon as the construction of the aqueduct was done, this line was pulled up. And like I said, it doesn't look like much, but it was just graded and track laid on here without ballast. And got to figure that 110 years ago, none of these bushes were here. They've had a lot of time to grow. But anyway, this is the connector line goes that way and just where it crosses the dirt road up there you can actually it actually starts to curve around to the left of course that levee wasn't there back then that's actually relatively new and, and uh, it connected to Chaffee up near the north switch at Chaffee all right on we go okay we are at the next crossing up from Sierra Highway. Next crossing out, I guess. Got the uh, local uh, switching here at a place called Chem Iron. And the reason this is called Chem Iron, and before I go any further, there's the Mojave Airport over there, and that is looking back down towards Chaffee, Mojave. But Chem Iron is a plant where they haul scrap iron in here, and they dump it in vats of acids and chemicals, and it, uh, I'm not sure if it dissolves the iron or if it just strips the iron of its oxidizing qualities, I don't know, but it creates a toxic chemical that is used in the purification of water. Now I knew that water purification involved toxic chemicals because I, before I went to work for the railroad I used to uh, drive trucks for a place and we hauled those toxic chemicals into the Arrowhead plant in Bakersfield. But anyway, that is chem iron and the local. Okay, we've moved up the line about three miles, a little under three miles from the private crossing to California City Boulevard. And unlike the private crossing, which only sees a few cars and trucks a day, California City Boulevard is actually a pretty busy crossing. The last time I was here doing uh, my annuals, I had the gates down to do a part of my test and a semi blew through one of them. 
So I had to go get stuff and build a gate. Again, this is looking uh, railroad north towards Mojave. Uh, north and south, as the uh, mileposts get smaller, you're going railroad north, Union Pacific anyway. And as they get larger, you're going railroad south. And that is looking out uh, towards uh, Cantill, Jawbone Canyon, Ransburg, out that way. And down there is California City. So let's move on. Okay. Sorry for the wind noise. I'm using my mic, but still it's really windy out here today. But uh, the reason I want to stop here is there was a station called Cinco. It was actually back down that way about a mile. And Cinco was the largest camp uh, on the branch while they were building it. Um, Chaffee was a marshalling yard and it was, it was a pretty good size, but Cinco actually was a camp. It had quarters where men stayed. At one time they said there were 500 uh, men who stayed there. It had a mess hall and the whole nine yards. And uh, it was a jump off point for a lot of the uh, work sites at the aqueduct. Um, the aqueduct runs right behind those hills right there. And if you look, I don't know if I can get way down there, the bottom of those hills, you see that white stripe. That is, that's the second phase of the aqueduct. That one was built between 1965 and 1970, but it actually parallels the original aqueduct. But anyway, Cinco was the uh, staging point for all the uh, work camps that were in this area that stretched from down there north all the way up to uh, Dove Springs. And uh, when we get to Cantill, we'll uh, talk about the uh, Red Rock Railroad that went up to Dove Springs. Also, one of the reasons I wanted to stop here, this is where uh, these are all solar arrays. They're are hundreds of acres of them out here. You can't see them all from here, We're kind of in a low spot. But, uh, I did a piece on my thoughts on solar energy, and something I'm not opposed to, but I did do a thing with my thoughts on that. I will link that uh, in the description below. It's on my other channel. But anyway, also, there was a station called Norelia, which was about three miles further that way from Cinco and it was actually a small development they tried to get going there were a couple of hotels there uh, never panned out and then uh, up this way about three miles is Norelia Road it's, I used to assume that uh, the community of Norelia was up that way by the crossing but it never was uh, it just carries that name but anyway we will head on up the line Stop here real quick. This isn't uh, part of the uh, past of the Olinio branch, but certainly part of its present and future. And these are the uh, solar arrays out here by Jawbone Canyon. Uh, this is about a mile from uh, Norelia Road towards Mojave. They're everywhere out here. See them out there. Well, they're everywhere. And they don't have anything to do with the railroad. The railroad didn't have anything to do with supplying the material to build. all hauled in by truck. Uh, but anyway, it still does go right through the middle of them. Going out that way. And then uh, this is a Jawbone Canyon Wash right here. Jawbone Wash, whatever it is. It's the wash that comes down out of Jawbone Canyon. And that right over there is the Jawbone Canyon store uh, facility. Uh, they have RV camping there. They rent off-road vehicles. And in the background, you can see that white pipe snaking up the uh, mountain there. 
That is the Los Angeles Aqueduct. I believe that is part two or phase two or whatever they call it. But anyway, another piece along the Oinyo branch. All right, this is the crossing at Norelia Road. Uh, this is about a mile west of Cantill. Uh, I did a piece on the history of Cantill. I'll link that in the description below. Interesting little walk around. I always knew that there was a settlement at Norelia and I just assumed that this was Norelia back in the 80s when I first started working out here, 1984, and then up into the 90s. The buildings were all still here. There were a bunch of buildings right here. Uh, I just assumed those were the remnants of the uh, community of Norelia, but as it turns out, those were a part of Cantill. And uh, as you, you'll see, or if you have already seen my piece on Cantill, up at the end of Norelia Road, whoop, up there, where it intersects with Red Rock Ransburg Road and Highway 14 was the uh, Cantill Restaurant and Store. Uh, so this whole area was known as Cantill, and as you saw a minute ago, uh, Norelli was actually quite a ways west of here. And remember, on the railroad or on the Southern Pacific and the Union Pacific, in this area anyway, the further east or south you go, the bigger the mileposts get. So it's when you get on branch lines sometimes it's a little confusing. But uh, anyway, this is Norelia Road. All right, we've moved up to Cantill. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen it, I uh, did a walk through, drive through little uh, history of Cantill. I will link that in the uh, description below. But anyway, we're looking southwest back towards Mojave and uh, this fenced in uh, area right here up until uh, according to the resource material I have up until 2005 this was still being used uh, to ship carloads uh, of product to the US Borac facility in Boron I was completely unaware of that but uh, anyway the siding here is now disconnected at both ends. It's no longer connected to the main line. And uh, right here is where the, uh, it wasn't really a depot, it was more just an office they had here. Uh, there were crew quarters here, there were uh, maintenance away uh, section crews stayed here. There was a 65,000 gallon water tank, which I'm assuming set right there. And there was a well house. Uh, uh, there was an agency here, a freight agency, and then uh, you could buy uh, passenger tickets here. You could also buy them back at Cinco. There was an agency back there. And uh, something I should have noted when I was back at Cinco was that this uh, railroad is really, until you get up by a little lake and highway up in that area, which is a considerable distance up the line, uh, this wasn't really very close to where the work was being done on the aqueduct. And at Cinco, they actually used uh, freight teams, horses, to move the material off the railroad and up to the work sites of the aqueduct. They experimented also with uh, steam and gas driven caterpillars and those they said those worked very well but uh, they had a lot of problems they weren't very reliable and pretty soon it ended up costing them more to uh, repair the uh, equipment than it did to operate it so anyway can till and we're gonna head up here this was also the uh, where the Red Rock Railroad split off and went up to Red Rock Canyon. You can't see that because of that levee right there. But uh, I'm not sure where that roadbed is. We'll go up there and see if we can locate it. And uh, moving on. All right. Uh, when I was looking at the uh, photograph of the spur track cutting off the main line here at Cantill to go out onto the Red Rock Railroad. Uh, 
road that went up to Dove Springs for some reason. I was thinking it was taken up there at the top of, of the next little hill. This goes over that and drops down and goes back up. But uh, the photograph said that it was looking toward Cantill, which I took to be the community over there. But actually, the siding wasn't in that picture, and obviously the siding would have been there when that picture was taken. And I moved up here, just uh, west of Cantill, and looking at the background and the grade and everything, this is where that switch would have been. It would have been a few hundred feet up that way. I can find absolutely no remnants of it over on the other side of that levee. That levee was built uh, in the uh, 80s. They did all that dirt work, so it would have wiped out any traces of anything coming off the uh, main line here. And on the other side of the levee, broad floodplain in the desert. Every time they have flash floods up in the mountains, that whole area just has water rushing down it. So I know that that roadbed, like the one in Mojave between uh, Sage and Chaffee, I know it was uh, never ballasted. Uh, so there wouldn't have been any elevated roadbed. It would have just been leveled up, ties and rails thrown down on top of it. Sorry for the wind noise. But uh, Anyway, I'm not going to spend any more time on it. I just thought it was interesting. I will uh, maybe I'll do a deal on the Red Rock Railroad if I can find some uh, remnants of it up towards Red Rock Canyon sometime. But anyway, I'm going to head on back out that way up to uh, uh, up to uh, Garlock. Well, that will bring to a close the first segment of the lower Lone Pine Branch. So join me for the next one. I hope you enjoyed this one. If uh, you have any comments, please leave them below. Any ideas, shoot me an email or leave them in the comments below.